Hey everyone, welcome back to another thrilling math lesson. Today we're talking about adding fractions. And I know that that's just a dirty word. We're going to add fractions. They're going to be positive. They're going to be negative. We're going to do it. It's going to be great. So, title our notes, adding fractions. Now this isn't fourth grade adding fractions. This is seventh grade adding fractions. But we do a lot of the same stuff. The rules don't really change, we just add to them. So the first example we're gonna work out is one and one half plus negative one third. So we're gonna take all of the rules about integers and all of the rules that we kind of used with decimals and we're gonna kind of morph it into work with this stuff. So the first thing I wanna do, and I tell you this because it works every time and you'll never go wrong, we're gonna make these fractions improper. So step one, we're going to make mixed numbers. I'm gonna use the number sign improper improper and that's because it's going to keep us from having to do that borrowing thing that everybody messes up on if you're good with borrowing and you remember how to borrow you can use that so to make something improper i take the denominator i multiply it by the numerator and then i add that's not the numerator that's the whole number. So I take the denominator times the whole number, then you add the numerator. There we go. So two times one is two, plus one is three. And I keep the denominator. So what I'm saying is if I have one and a half pizzas, I have two halves, and another half, so that's three halves, because two halves of a pizza would make one whole pizza, so a half, a half, and another half, that's three halves, plus negative one third. When a fraction is a negative, assign that negative number to the numerator. It'll help keep it out of the way. So step one done, we've made this improper. The next rule, when we're adding fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So my next step is I'm going to find a common denominator. Denominator. An easy way to do that is to count by the denominators. So if I counted by twos, and I counted by threes, so twos and threes. So two, so this isn't two thirds, two, four, six, eight, ten, and so on. And then threes, three, six, nine, twelve. Oh wait, stop. I see sixes. Both two and three can go to six. So if Six is my common denominator. What did I have to do to the two to get to six? We multiplied it by three. Two times three was six. So over here, I'm gonna go through a times three portal. So if two times three is six, then three times three is nine. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing. What did I have to do to the 3 to get to 6? I times by 2. So over here, I'm going through a times 2 portal. 3 times 2 was 6. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And I'm still adding. All right, next step. 
We have a common denominator, and when we add fractions, you keep that denominator the same. So I have 9 sixths, and I want to add negative 2 sixths to that. So I'm still dealing with 6. It's hard to say. So I only look at the numerators, and I treat it like it says 9 plus negative 2. Step three, we keep the numerator, I'm sorry, denominator. We keep the denominator, sorry. So I'm gonna keep the six, keep the six. And then I'm going to add the numerators using integer rules. Add numerators. with integer rules. So if I have nine positives and I add two negatives, imagine you're at nine on the number line. So if I'm at nine and I wanted to add two negatives, if I added two positives, I would go this way and I would be at 11, but this is an 11. 9 plus negative 2, I'd have to go 2 this way. So I end up with 7. It would be positive 7. If 9 plus 2 is 11, then 9 plus negative 2, we'd have to go the other direction. And since this is a proper fraction, I'm done with that example. Let's try another one. What if you had negative four and two thirds plus four fifths? Step one, I need to make this improper. So three times four, so take your denominator, multiply it by the whole number, that's 12, plus two is 14, Keep the denominator, and then over here I have four fifths. Don't lose the negative. This is still negative. Remember to assign the negative to the numerator. All right, step two. What was step two? We need a common denominator. I have three and five. What number can three and five go to? The smallest one is 15. So what did you have to put three through to get to a 15? We'd have to put it through a times five portal. So 14 times five is 70. And it's still negative. And over here, what did you have to do to the five to get to 15? It was times three. So four times three is 12. And we're still adding. All right, next step, step three. What's my new denominator? What's the denominator of my answer? It's still 15. We keep the denominator the same. So my denominator is 15. And then I add the numerators. So negative 70 plus 12 is negative 58. It stays negative because if you start at negative 70 and you add 12, adding 12 makes it go to the right on the number line. So if you imagine on the number line, you're at negative 70. Moving to the left, is subtraction. So if I'm adding 12, I have to go this way 12 times. And this is zero over here. Down there somewhere is zero. So negative 70 ends up being at negative 58. And now, bonus step, we need to make this a proper fraction because as is, that's not pretty. So how many times can 15 
go into 58. I know that 15 times 2 is 30, and 2 30s make 60. Oh, but that's too much. So 15 times 3 would be 45, and 45 to 58 would be 15, 13, sorry, 13. 45, yeah, 13. 35, 55, yeah. And then I keep the denominator the same. Uh, I forgot something. Got to keep that negative sign. So this is my answer. Now, last one, a simple one, just to reinforce something. A negative plus a negative is a negative. A positive plus a positive is a positive. So if I had negative one half plus negative one third, if a negative plus a negative is a negative, my answer here has to be a negative. My common denominator would be six. So two times three is six, so that's three. Three times two is six. So negative three plus negative two, negative five, and my denominator is six. So a negative plus a negative stays a negative. The only time we have to really think about it is when we're trying to do negatives and positives, and then it's the bigger team. The bigger team wins when we add them together like that. All right. Thanks for hanging in for another lesson with Mrs. Barnes. See you all next time. Don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, and ring the bell to get notifications. Bye, guys.